So, so real quick, for anybody that doesn't know me, here's my story in a nutshell. Um, I'm a high school dropout. I didn't go to college. I'm one of the first people in my family to not go to college. And instead, uh, I chose to pursue a career of sales. I chose to just work, make sales, make commissions. And that sales and commissions kind of attitude really worked for me because as a high school dropout, nobody was checking my resumes, nobody was checking anything. Well, that led me to the world of online marketing. I started designing websites even though I sucked. Then I started, the clients all wanted them to get ranked in Google. So I started basically in my spare time researching on the web every single day how to rank sites in Google. And if you want to know how old I am, they weren't, they weren't just wanting to get ranked in Google. Now everybody just wants Google, right? They were wanting to get ranked in Alta Vista, Webcrawler, Ask Jeeves, you know, Lycos, Yahoo, all of these search engines were the big buzz back then and then Google just dominated. So that was me. I was the guy who didn't have any mentors, didn't have any courses, didn't have anybody to turn to for help. All I had was access to the internet. Now, I didn't even own a computer back then. I would actually catch the bus all the way across town to a library where I could use the computers in the library and I would just sit there for hours on end until finally I would catch the bus back home. And I was so broke, I would eat Top Ramen before I left to stay full and then I would eat Top Ramen when I came back. And that was like my daily budget. So I was operating on like 30 to 50 cents a day, food and, and coffee and, and drink, right? So that was me. That's where I got started. I got started sort of from humble beginnings in terms of self-taught, didn't have the courses, didn't have anything. Then, as I started finally having success, I found another calling, which was to mentor other people. So my friend George, I was like, let me show you how to do what I'm doing. And I just started getting all my friends around and saying, here's what I'm doing. I'm building websites. I'm doing these certain things to them and they're showing up in Google. Then Google just sends all this traffic and then we make money. We either make money by selling this to clients or we make money from what's called affiliate marketing. Everybody said, what's affiliate marketing? And back then I said, there's this site. So amazon.com will pay us commissions for every sale we make. So for example, if I build a web page all about snowboards, and I get it ranked in Google, people come to Google and they search about snowboard boots, whatever. They land on an article that I have about snowboard boots and then I recommend that they buy these snowboard boots. They click over to Amazon and they buy them. So maybe they go and they spend $300 on Amazon and I get paid like a 15 to $30 commission, about 5% to 10% commissions. So I get paid 15 to $30. Doesn't sound like much, but if you get the sites to rank well, you're just making passive income every single day and people are shopping on Amazon. That's called affiliate marketing. I created websites, ranked them in Google, Google sent free traffic, those people bought stuff, I got a commission check like 30 to 60 days later. So I started teaching my friends how to do this. Now, I came across an even better affiliate program than Amazon. It was something called Google AdSense. What Google AdSense was is these little banners that you can put on your blogs and stuff like that and it automatically displays ads. So if you've ever been on a website and you see that they have banner ads, it's probably Google ads. Google is probably, if you put, look at the little text, it probably says that it's like powered by Google. So I could take these Google ads and put them on my website. Now, I didn't think it would be much money, but I said, you know what, let me give it a shot. Let me just see how well it would work. And oh my God, it worked so much better. So I had done about six figures in commissions with Amazon. I was averaging about five to $10,000 a month and I had already crossed over $100,000 in commissions from Amazon. But once I put on Google AdSense, Boy, it, it just absolutely changed. I started making between ten to twenty thousand dollars a month, so I basically like doubled and tripled my income just by putting these little ads on. And it was so much easier because with Amazon, I had to go and find the right products and link over to the products. With Google, you just put a piece of code on on the whole website, and it automatically changed. So I started becoming a Google AdSense marketer, made multiple six figures. Then, then here's what happened: I got distracted in my career. I was making all this money and I watched my friends blow up in the real estate industry. So shiny object syndrome, I completely changed industries. I got out of internet marketing, took my money and got into the real estate industry. And unfortunately that story goes that I lost all that money. I got in the wrong time. All my friends were making millions. I thought it was so easy. I lost my money, got back into sales, kind of built myself back up and I got back into internet marketing right around the year when Facebook, really when Facebook got big, so around the year 2008. In 2008, Facebook came out, and the way that I saw Facebook wasn't how everybody else saw it. You had really two groups of people. 
You had college kids who saw Facebook as this like social network for colleges. And then you had the rest of the public, this other group, who saw Facebook as like this new network that was blowing up. They kept getting invitations by email that said, your friend Bob has joined Facebook and, and has uploaded 29 pictures. If you, wanna, if you wanna see these pictures, create a free account. So Facebook had this like viral marketing scheme that was going on where they were basically spamming all your friends by email, but no one said anything it was the Wild West and Facebook blew up with this whole like schemey viral marketing scheme. So Facebook is blowing up. I'm not part of either group. I'm not part of the, I'm not part of the college kid group looking at it. I'm not part of these, like the public looking at it. I am an entrepreneur over here going, this is exactly what happened when Google blew up. I watched this happen to Google. When Google came on the scene, I learned how to op optimize sites for Google and it blew up. The same exact thing is happening, but for Facebook. And so when I saw that, the very first thing I said was, rather than get caught up in this whole social media thing, I'm going to use Facebook for business. I created a course called FB4B, Facebook for Business, and I basically showed people the business side of Facebook, how to be able to use it for marketing, how to use it to generate leads for your business, how to be able to promote live events with it, how to be able to sell stuff on Facebook, how to be able to uh, use Facebook ads, and it kind of went on and on and on. And as Facebook grew and ended up becoming a leader, I was positioned early on as one of the top marketers on Facebook. Now, I didn't make like huge amounts of money back then, but I was still making six figures from it. I had my best month marketing on Facebook was like, in 2008 was like $50,000 in commissions in a month. So it was doing good, but I wasn't making millions yet. What happened was I was basically learning how to use social media to promote affiliate products. So I've been an affiliate marketer almost all my life, right? It was Amazon and Google in the early days. Now I was looking at networks such as like ClickBank and all these and share a sale and all these affiliate networks that exist out there. So then I decided to take it a step further. I said, you know, I want to do better. I want to make more money. What are the people who's making over a hundred thousand dollars a month? Like actually, like I said, I looked out who's making the big money. Who's actually legitimately making money that I can go follow that I can learn and I can duplicate because listen, success leaves clues. How did I know this? I'm a, I'm a college, I'm a high school dropout. So how did I know to, to model after successful people? Because every single day of my life, I was listening to personal development audios and I was reading personal development books. So I was being saturated. I was saturating my mind with this kind of knowledge, with knowledge such as, you know, uh, positive mindset about about uh, dealing with failure, dealing with adversity. When 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 I lose all my money, how to be able to bounce back quickly, reframing, and all of these things I was studying and learning. So, so when the time came, I was already pretty knowledgeable about this. So I said, you know what? If I want to be successful, why don't I find people who are several levels up from where I am? If there's levels one through ten, and let's say that I'm down here at like level three, let's say I'm not broke, I'm making six figures. But I, but I see people making you know, upwards of like 100,000 a month, 500,000 a month, even a million dollars a month. So let's put them up at like level seven, eight, nine, 10. So I'm, I'm at level three making a constant 10 or $20,000 a month. How can I get to level seven where these people are making $100,000 a month? So I started studying and I came across a new industry. This industry was called digital publishing. It was just like affiliate marketing, but it's called digital publishing. And what it was is Instead of promoting somebody else's products, you can create your own product and promote your own product. It's a very unique idea because when I'm promoting Amazon's products, I'm only making 5% commission on every sale. And if the product is digital, then there's, there could be 100% commission. So what I mean by that is if I created, let's say a $100 course that taught people a topic, like how to advertise on Facebook or something. If I create a $100 course, and you buy it, as long as it's my course, I get to keep 100% commissions. So all I have to do is develop this course and I can keep 100% commissions. Then if I want the course to make a lot more sales, I can actually have so much profit on it, I can give half the profit away to other affiliates for them to promote it. So I got into this world of digital publishing. I created a course called Dark Post Profits. It was a $100 course and I promoted it myself. It did about $100,000 in sales but I was able to make about $100,000. I mean, there's little merchant fees and stuff, so it's never actually 100%, and there's refunds, but it still was like 90% commissions. So I made about $100,000 promoting myself. But then 
I put it out on an affiliate network called JBZoo. JBZoo is this place where you can launch your digital course and if it does well, they will potentially choose it as the product of the day and promote it out to all their affiliates. And JBZoo at the time had um, uh, an affiliate list of like tens of thousands of affiliates. So JVZoo, JV stood for joint venture. So this is a marketplace where you could come and you could meet other affiliates and partner with them and pay them commissions. And it was like JVZoo set the whole thing up. JVZoo collected 5% off the top of everything. So I was like, screw it. So I put it out there on JVZoo. And at first, no sales came in. It was not magic for me. I didn't, I didn't instantly have success. But then all of a sudden, sales started coming in. One, two a day, five a day, 10 a day. Suddenly I'm like, oh my God, this course is doing like a couple thousand dollars a day in sales. Then I noticed something else. Almost all the sales were coming from one person, from one affiliate. And instantly I thought, great, fraud. I'm finally dealing with my first fraud. Uh, and so I was like, what am I gonna do? You know, I gotta, I gotta deal with this. So I checked into this affiliate, right? And I checked into him and I looked into him and it was pretty, pretty cool because he was actually a real affiliate and I reached out to him and I said, hey, I'm really, I'm really curious. I noticed that you're making a lot of sales for my course. I just wanna say thank you. And I just wanna say, how did you hear about me? And he said, oh, simple. I bought the course myself for hundred bucks. I thought it was good. And I was like, you know what? I'll promote this to my list. So I sent out uh, two emails and I was like, wait, you made all those sales from two emails? He's like, yeah. He's like, not only that, but a lot of people on my list are affiliates and they're all asking about being an affiliate for your program too, but you have to go in and approve them. I was like, wait, I have to approve people? So I had to go in the back and I had to go and approve all of these people. I didn't know there was all these pending affiliates. Once I approved them all, they all started sending um, tons and tons and tons of, uh, of emails and that course ended up doing about $500,000 in sales. So let's recap where, where I'm at and how this is gonna benefit you. I started out, as a what, I, what we call SEO, search engine optimization. I started out just writing blog posts and getting them ranked in Google, and those blog posts would sell Amazon products, and then eventually I switched so that they would just have Google ads on them. Then, um, after that blew up, I ended up getting into real estate and getting out of the industry for several years, just stay in sales. When I came back in the industry, um, I saw that social media was the new Google. So I basically, social media was the new search engine, if you will. So then I really got focused on Facebook, YouTube, Pinterest, all of these other types of networks. And I really started figuring out how to make money in those industries. And I made multiple six figures for years as an affiliate marketer. Then I had my big breakthrough in what was called digital publishing. That's where I realized I can actually create my own courses. And if I create my own courses, I can keep nearly 100% of the profit. And I can create a course on any topic that I want. And that's what propelled me to um, making that $500,000 in sales. That course, when I relaunched the course, Dark Post Profits 2, that course did $850,000 in sales in five days, crossed over a million dollars in sales in two weeks. Uh, then I launched other courses, several of which did over a million dollars in sales. Some of those courses went on, did a couple million dollars. Then from there, built a company around it. That company did you know, tens of millions of dollars. And that's really how my career had that trajectory. A lot of people look at me now and they don't realize that there was a lot of years that put in to get to where I am, to where I, and, and I don't consider myself like wealthy financially, I consider myself wealthy with knowledge. I could sit down at a table and talk with anybody about almost any internet marketing topic and I could hold my own ground with them. And I don't mean that in like a bragging way, I'm just saying to me, my value hierarchy, what I value in my life is I value knowledge over money because money comes and goes but knowledge stays. So I would rather like, even when I make money, I reinvest it back into knowledge. Because as long as I have the knowledge, you can drop me out of a helicopter in any, like let's say here in the United States, drop me out of a helicopter into any city in the United States at all where I don't even know a single soul and I'll be able to build a six or seven figure income out of that city. Regardless if there's beaches or regardless if it's snowing all day long, regardless if it's a big population town or a low population town, because the, the knowledge is transferable. And since knowledge is transferable, it goes with you everywhere you go, wherever you go in the world, whatever you go, and knowledge is transferable to other people. So you can actually transfer that wisdom onto your children, onto your family, onto your relatives, onto your friends, and you can help create wealth with everybody around you. So I always valued that. To me, that felt more like leaving a legacy than just accumulating possessions. You know, 
Um, so I've never really, if you, even if you look at my lifestyle, I always just wear hoodies, and right now I'm wearing hoodies and sweats, and um, you know, I rarely have much nice to show for, you know. Uh, sometimes I do. I don't mind. I don't have any, like, sometimes I'll drive a nice car, or sometimes I'll live in, like, a, I'll, I'll choose, like, a nicer place to rent. Like, I've lived in mansions, and I've lived in uh, sky rises, but I'm also the guy that will have no problem eating Top Ramen and sleeping on a friend's couch for a month. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, I love the humbling experiences. I still do things like ride the, ride the public bus and do things and just, like, where I get connected with, with reality. So I don't ever get to this point where I'm cocky you know, too overly confident and actually egotistical. So I always try to balance. So that's kind of like my journey. And my journey sort of sort of took a lot of ups and downs. Now, the question I want to ask you is, is like, you don't have to type in the comments, but like, what's your journey? So and here's what I mean. Let me frame that story is let's look at where you are now, both financially, knowledge wise, business wise. Do you have a job? Are you full time business? Are you do you have a family? Where are you at now? And then where were you a year ago, two years ago, five years ago on the journey to get to where you are now? So what I mean by that is we all have a story. And part of the, part of the process of being successful is tactics where you actually think, need to learn what to do. And part of the process of being successful is, is journey where you actually just have to get to the destination. Like, like, uh, like, like imagine that there's a road, there's a path that you see a kingdom in the distance and you're like, I am going to get there to that castle. Well, you don't necessarily know what obstacles are going to be on this path, but you know, there has to be obstacles. Other, ev otherwise everybody would go to the kingdom. There has to be something that blocks the average person from making it. And so you have to ask yourself, and when I get to these obstacles, am I going to quit? Am I going to put my head down? Am I going to be the average person that's too scared to overcome the obstacles and get to the kingdom? Or am I going to be one of the, one of the top 5% that make it through? Yeah, 95% of people might fail on that journey, but you can choose to be one of the top 5% simply by not giving up. Along that journey, I had lots and lots and lots of things that could force me to give up, and I just kept going. And that's how you get to the kingdom. So I want you to think about that. Where are you at now? And where were you a year ago? Where were you two years ago? Where were you five years ago? Because one day you need to be able to visualize yourself in the kingdom, telling your story to inspire other people to go on that journey to be able to get there. Or if not a kingdom, you're at the top of a mountain that was so difficult to climb and you planted your flag there and you're at the top and you're giving a speech to the people down on the bottom that are still afraid and you're telling them your story about how you were just like them, but you took the journey and, and you telling them about the obstacles and the adversities that you have, but you made it. By telling your story like that, in your own mind, you'll see yourself as a victor, not a victim. You'll see yourself as somebody who's succeeding, not failing. You'll see, you'll see yourself as somebody who's making progress, not somebody who keeps hitting walls. And so the first thing that I've always learned when teaching other people is that the majority of people have enough knowledge to already be successful, but they're not applying their knowledge. Why? Because there's inner game and there's outer game. Inner game is what goes on up here in your mind. Outer game is what goes on here in your actions. So in your mind, the biggest problem people face is they don't want to accept the reality that it's, it's really their mindset that is blocking them or helping them to have success more than it is the actual physical tactics. It's, how, it's, it's, it's their lens that they view the world through. So if you view the world through a lens where you're a victim or you view the world through a lens where you're facing hardship or you're facing adversity or where life is so tough for you or where it's unfair and you're comparing yourself to all these other people that are successful, if you're viewing the world from that lens, then that view, that mindset is going to prevent you from being successful because that is not a success mindset in any way whatsoever. So if you want to become successful, let's say financially, then you need to look at the mindset that other financial people have that are doing very, very well. And you need to learn to apply some of that mindset to yourself. So for example, even though I was struggling financially building my business, I had to catch the bus. Well, I had to catch the bus from the west side to downtown, then the bus from downtown to 41st Avenue, then the bus from 41st Avenue to Cabrillo College. Then I had to sneak on a campus because I wasn't a student. Then I had to go to the library and I had to sit at the Cabrillo College library computers for eight hours without food, without drink, without anything because I couldn't afford that money, the meals they have over there. Then I would get back on the bus, catch the bus from the college to, to the 41st Avenue, 41st Avenue to downtown, downtown back to the west side. And then I would go back to my apartment and I would sit there and eat top ramen and drink coffee and listen to personal development audios with no social life. Do you think that sounds exciting? No. 
Do you think that that, is, that, was, that was some adversity? Yes. The, the, I was staying in a 250 square foot studio, you know, with plants growing through the windows. Okay. It was adversity, but it was worth it. I, I never once, it's so weird. People tell me about their victim situation when they're doing really, really well even. And I look at that and I'm like, I wasn't a victim back then. I never saw myself as a victim. It was weird. I saw myself, look at, look at the mindset I had was that I had cracked the code of the game. I was like, oh my God, are you kidding me? Other people go to college, spend like six figures, spend four to five to six years there, and then afterwards they get a starter job, then finally they elevate, get a little bit of a raise, then finally they get a really nice $60,000 per year cush job, which is just enough money to pay for rent, pay for the cars, pay for the kids, pay for the food, and that's it. And then it becomes a check to check to check, month to month to month business for them. Okay, that's the path that the majority of people take. And over here, I was like, wait, this thing right here, I can literally pop this open and inside of this world here with no boss, with nobody checking my resume, with any time schedule that I want, that I can sit here and I can create income while watching a movie in the background, that I can create income, whether it's 2 a.m. in the morning or whether it's 2 p.m. in the afternoon, that I can sit here and I can learn any infinite amount of knowledge that I want. It's all right here. And I can be in control of my own life. And I can literally not just spend the next eight years to make 60,000, but I can spend the next eight years and I can be making 60,000 a month or 600,000 a month. So why am I even telling you this? Because you see, what people don't realize is that learning about affiliate marketing and learning about digital publishing and learning about these industries is like finding a gold mine in your backyard. And all you have to do is every day go out there and grab your shovel and start digging around for gold. You've got a gold mine in this industry. That's what people don't realize. They don't even, it doesn't even make sense to people. It doesn't make sense. When I tell people what I do, when I get the Uber and, and if I say, hey, I do affiliate marketing, somebody goes, oh, I've heard about that. What is that? And I'll say, well, you know all those places people shop online? Well, if you send the people there with a little link, those, those sites will kick you back like 20% of whatever they buy. And they're like, oh, like a, like a rewards deal, like a, like a lottery kind of a deal. I'm like, no, like literally, you're the advertiser. Oh, so you probably had to go to like advertising school for that. No, you, they just give you a link. You sign up for free. They give you a link. You share it on Facebook. People buy stuff. They send you hundreds of dollars. And they're like, oh, like a, like a Ponzi scheme. I was like, what? Like people don't even get it. They don't get it. Listen, if you were a traditional business and you were selling something, okay? Let's say you were selling bobbleheads, okay? Like a little bobblehead Chris. Let's say you were a traditional business owner and you were selling bobbleheads, okay? If, I, if this is my business, I can spend money to advertise. I can go buy billboards. I can go buy radio spots. I can go buy commercials on TV. I can go buy advertisements on bus benches, advertisements in local newspapers. All of that is money that I'm spending up front to go pay all of these places, hoping and praying that somebody comes from one of those advertisements and buys a little bobblehead. And it might work and it might not, but the risk is all on me. I have to front tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars hoping that it works, okay? just to get somebody to order a little bobblehead. Or, you know what else I could do? Just put a picture of the bobblehead on a website and I can put an affiliate program and say, hey, affiliates, these bobbleheads are 50 bucks and every single one that you sell, I'll give you $10. $10 for every bobblehead that you sell. And I can give affiliates. Affiliates go out there and put all the advertising out there. They advertise on their blogs, they advertise the websites, they make YouTube videos, they make Facebook pages, they make groups, they make posts, they make Pinterest accounts. They, they, they do everything to go and promote this and I don't pay any money up front. As a business owner, I pay nothing up front. I only pay after I've received income. So the affiliate advertises, it drives all the traffic, somebody buys the bobblehead, I receive the 50 bucks, I hold on to the 50 bucks, then 30 days later, I cut the affiliate their $10 check. That is so much safer, so much less risk for a business owner than going and paying all this traditional advertising. What people don't realize is that affiliate marketing is one of the most legitimate business professions in the world. You're, you're, as an affiliate marketer, you're like your own little advertising agency and all you have to do is sign up for these affiliate programs, get your links, and go and promote them. That's it. It's the most legitimate business that you can be in. These companies will pay you. Some of them will pay you a lot of money. 
And you know how easy it is to find companies? Just go to Google, search a topic, and search affiliate program. You can literally probably do bobblehead affiliate program, and there's probably something that comes up. I don't know if someone else can. There's probably, they're literally, in this hypothetical example, there probably is an affiliate program for bobbleheads. There's an affiliate program for everything. And then there's big networks like Amazon, you can be affiliates that have every product under the sun. So, where do we go from here? What I want to do is I want to do a couple of things. One is I want to start diving into tactics. I wanted to start with mindset, I wanted to start with principles, and I wanted to start with a vision for what affiliate marketing is and, and why it's so good and why if your mindset is right, you'll realize you've cracked gold. You've literally struck a gold mine. Now let's talk about some basic, um, let's talk about some basic things regarding what to do as a beginner with affiliate marketing. And I got Peter's, Peter's walks in the room, so in a minute Peter will join us. Peter, in the background, if you can, Earlier I asked a question for people to say if they were beginner, intermediate, or advanced. Other beginners, for sure. And you're saying the majority was beginners? Okay. So majority is beginner, so I'll make sure I'll try, I'll try not to go too fast. Peter will pop in in just a second here. Wally, let's go to the whiteboard. Let's go on the whiteboard for just a second here. Okay, so let's, let's kind of like, let's just drop some stuff. Affiliate marketing. And if you guys are coming in... Um, if you guys are coming in a little bit uh, a little bit late, in the beginning I said for some reason my laptop's not synced into the TV, so I'm going to basically use the whiteboard. And also I apologize for the first uh, couple minutes where there was no volume when we live. Okay, affiliate marketing, right? So in a nutshell, it's, it's basically this simple, okay? So there's you, okay? And what you do is, this is you, let me put you, okay? So what you do is you go and you find... Um, a company. So let's just say, let's call this a company that maybe pays commissions. So a company that pays commissions with an, what's called an affiliate offer. Okay, I don't want to go too low because I don't know if you'll be able to read it. Affiliate offer. Okay, so you've got this company over here that has an affiliate offer. They get you as the affiliate to go and promote it. So you go out and you're going to go put this promotion on a bunch of different places. Maybe you're gonna put a YouTube video. Maybe you're gonna put it on a blog, a blog post. Like maybe you're gonna review it. Maybe you're gonna put it on share it with your people on Facebook. And maybe you're gonna send out an email. So this company has an affiliate offer. You are gonna promote it on wherever you can. And I'm just saying these places because these places are free or, or low cost, free or low cost. So then what happens is you make a review video. So like, let's say like basically here's your review video. Review of product. And what happens is this video sits in YouTube for months. But what happens is it gets, you know, first it gets, it starts with like 10 views, then it gets to 100 views, then it gets to 1,000 views, and then it just keeps going up, okay? And as you get more views, these views turn into clicks. And as you get clicks, what happens is this video on YouTube might result in like 10,000 clicks over time. And out of those 10,000 clicks that go check out this product, maybe 1% of the people buy the product, okay? It might be more, depending on how good the product is. Maybe 5%, maybe 10% buy it. If 10% if bought it, out of 10,000 clicks, 10% would be 1,000. That would be 1,000 buyers. Okay, but let's just say 1% buy. 1% buy the product. That would be, instead of 1,000 buyers, that would be 100 buyers. And let's say you make $50 a sale. That would be $5,000. Now, why am I drawing this out? Because I want you to see the magic of this. This is what people don't realize of why it's so easy to make money in affiliate marketing. In this example, you found an affiliate offer and you promoted it in all these different places. One of your YouTube videos did well, you ended up getting 100 buyers. Now, you might go, okay, well 10,000 clicks is a lot. Okay, let's say you just got 1,000 clicks and 10% of them bought. I'm just using, these are just numbers. Maybe you make more on commissions. So I'm just saying hypothetically, if you got 100 people to buy and you made $50 a commission, you would have made $5,000 in commissions. But what did you actually do? What did you actually do to make $5,000 in commissions? I need you to understand this. You actually made a video. How long is this video? I don't know. Let's say this video was five minutes long. Okay. That video is five minutes long. 
So you took the time to make a five minute video and got paid $5,000 in commissions. Now, the reason I want you to really let this sink in is because this is the dream of why people want to do affiliate marketing. This is not the, this is not necessarily the average typical thing that's going to happen every time you go to promote something until you're an expert. Once you're an expert, yes. Once you get beginner, intermediate, advanced, once you get to advanced, sure. Like, I wouldn't even promote something unless I was going to make at least $5,000 from the promotion. It's, this wouldn't even be worth it to me, right? I don't even look at offers unless I could really make, you know, $50,000 a month off the offers. So you'll get to a point where you're advanced where this will happen. But in the beginning, this feels like the dream. One video generated $5,000 in sales. So let's talk about this as a case study right now. What would it take? It would take, number one, finding a good company with a good offer. Part of the work you do is finding affiliate offers, okay? So let's say you, you took the time and you found a really great product that you could stand behind, they paid a good commission, you make $50 every time you sell it, and you feel like this is a good offer. Then you've got to sign up for this affiliate program, which means you need to give them either, you either need to set up a, a, a business account, like you need to go down, what I do is I actually file an LLC for my affiliate marketing. An LLC will, is, in the, is in the hundreds of dollars, but I actually usually just pay a firm a thousand bucks or so to set up an LLC for me because I love having it all done for me. When you're first brand, brand new starting out, you might need to go online and do it all yourself. But I set up an LLC in Nevada, and then that LLC gives me what's called an EIN number. EIN stands for Employer Identification Number. Basically, it's saying instead of using my own social security number, I can just set up a business, and they'll give me an EIN number, which is like a social security number for the business. Then I go down to the bank, I'll go down to like Chase Bank, and I'll open up a business account. And I'll say, okay, I'd like to open up a business account. Here's my company paperwork. Then they open up a business account. I'll put like a thousand bucks in it, start it off, just throw some money in there. And now I have a business account and, a, and a, essentially a social number for my corporation. So when I go and I apply for these companies here, when I apply for all these affiliate offers, I don't use my personal information. I'll, I'll use my corporation. So I'll sign up as my corporation. Uh, so whenever a sale comes in, you're telling them where to send the money. Oh, send it to this corporation at this address, put it in this bank account, blah, 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 blah. I'll also use that corporation to sign up for like PayPal and Stripe. In case these affiliate offers say they paid through PayPal, great. I'll sign up for PayPal through my corporation. I'll sign up for a Stripe account, a Square account. I'll sign up for all the things through my corporation. So now I have a corporation that signs up for the affiliate offers. That's part of the work, finding a good affiliate offer and signing up. Now, once I get the link, the other part of the work over here is promoting the affiliate offer. So finding, signing up, and promoting. Well, I just put four sources right here. YouTube, blog, Facebook, email. It doesn't matter. I can name 100 sources. Like literally, so many sources. I could advertise. I could run paid ads. I could go on Pinterest and just do a bunch of pictures of the product. I can go on forums and I can go have discussions with all kinds of people about the products. I can go do uh, solo ads. I can go do joint ventures. I could, there's so many ways as an affiliate marketer that you can promote something. So. The biggest thing that I want you to take away right now is a lot of people say, I can't make sales of a product because I don't have a list. Okay? This is like, again, remember, remember when I told you mindset is everything? When I was having to catch the bus all across town, I would eat Top Ramen and drink coffee. Why would I do that? Because Top Ramen would fill me up and then coffee would suppress my appetite. So I wouldn't be hungry for eight hours. So I would eat Top Ramen and I would drink coffee. Then I would catch three buses, which including the waiting time in between the buses, all the way across town to go sit at a computer for eight hours because the only place I knew where I could go for free. Then I would do all the way back and then I would eat some top ramen again and wind down for the night. And I would do that every single day. And I never was a victim. It would be raining, pouring, lightning. I never saw myself as a victim. I always saw myself as like looking around like everybody else is crazy. I, saw, I thought everybody else was crazy because I'm like, you gotta be crazy. There's gold. There's this industry that you can get in with no resume, no college degree. You don't have to go to eight years. You have unlimited income potential. You can work your own hours. You can work from anywhere in the world. People are making money. There's kids. Are you guys all crazy? That was my attitude. I thought the world was crazy that were just, they were talking about like going to a minimum wage job and being like, they were just like, I'm just glad to have a job. And I was like, and I'm not an anti-job person. I was just like, are you crazy? Like, you could have unlimited potential. Oh, well, I don't have the skills to be a doctor or, or an attorney or somebody that makes a lot of money. Are you kidding? Are you kidding? I thought everybody else was crazy. So let me ask you, when you see this, even as a beginner, when I saw this, 
I thought, I, I started learning about affiliate marketing, I thought it was gold. I thought it was a gold mine. I thought everybody else was crazy. Why would you not do this? Like, like why would you not do this? So when people tell me, like one of the big objections I get from beginners is, I don't have a list. And when people tell me that, it's like, that's no different to me saying, I don't have a computer. Like people go, uh, like modern day, 2019, you know what people are saying? People are saying, well, I don't have a big following. Are you kidding? You probably in your house have four computers. Everybody probably has a phone in their pocket that can do most of your marketing. When I started, I didn't have this. I didn't have any of this. Right now, you have courses that, you have thousands of YouTube videos you can learn from. There were not thousands of YouTube videos when I got started. You have so much stuff that you have access to right now that nobody else did that I would tell you with 110% confidence that it is easier for you to make money right now than it ever was for anybody 10 years ago. It is easier. There is no excuse you could give me that it's not easier. You have more tools. You know how long it used to take, take, uh, take me to build a sales funnel? I would work on a sales funnel for about two to four weeks, full time, before I ever was ready to launch it. Do you know how long it takes me to launch a sales funnel right now? Two to four hours. I just open up a program like ClickFunnels and I just choose an existing template and change the words and press done. You know how long it used to take me to build a membership site? Two to four weeks. You know how long I build it take to build a membership now? Two to four hours, or at least a day. I use tools like Smart Member and just build membership sites that fast. Are you kidding me? Do you know how much more money I'd make, how much faster I would have advanced if I had any of these tools and resources? I didn't, and any of the old schoolers that got started internet marketing back when like Google was new and stuff like that, you know exactly what I'm talking about. People think, oh, you got in early, that's why you succeeded. No, it doesn't work like that. Are you telling me TikTok, the new social network, got in early? No. Are you telling me Disney Plus got in early? No. Disney Plus just signed up 10 million people uh, for streaming accounts in a day. Do you think that's because they got in early? No, they're the latest to get in. Why? Because all these other pioneers created the market so that when Disney Plus jumped in, there was already a huge market of people willing to pay for streaming services. They didn't have to convince anybody. They didn't have to persuade the public. All they had to say was, here's ours. Boom. And they succeeded. So listen, you are not, you, if you are at all thinking in your mind that you did not get in early enough, the biggest wave hasn't even come yet. You, like, we're all, all the advanced people I know, we're all just trying to scramble and prepare for the next big wave that's gonna come after 2020. Because what's gonna happen is a lot of people, and I don't wanna be a doomsday guy, but a lot of people are saying, a lot of big people believe the market at some point has to tip. The market has been doing too good for too long, the market has to tip. A lot of people are waiting to see how the 2020 presidential election goes, that they believe that that will be determined kind of the tipping point or not. But the market has to tip. It has to tip. The government can maybe prop it open, but it has to go back down at some point. Once it goes back down, when the economy gets hurt, what happens to affiliate marketers? What happens to, what happens to online marketers? Boom, they soar. Why do, why do companies, why do industries like internet marketing, online marketing, affiliate marketing, uh, digital publishers, uh, network marketing, why do all those industries uh, surge up in a down economy? Does anybody know why I'm watching right now? Why do the, when, the, when the rest of the economy goes down and starts tanking, why do those go up? Do you guys have any idea? I, got, I, said, I, said, I, got, I said I got involved in Facebook marketing in 2008. What was happening in 2008, 2009 at the time? One of the biggest downturns we had in the economy. One of the biggest downturns, right? We had a stock market crisis, we had a um, real estate crisis, and then we had a um, big business crisis, right? Big banks and big auto companies. Don't you remember Obama came into office and had to bail out all of these companies, right? So Obama came in and basically was just giving handouts to try to keep these companies alive so the whole economy wouldn't crumble into like a Great Depression, okay? So our modern day version of a Great Depression was happening. Meanwhile, my business was soaring. So how do you get a business, how do you get involved in a business that's recession proof? Simple, think about it this way. How much does Facebook cost to use? How much is it, what, what, how much does Facebook cost, cost wise, right? It's free. How much does YouTube cost to use? Free. How much does Instagram cost to use? Free. How much is TikTok? Free. How much is Pinterest? Free. How much are all the, how much is Google? Free. So when, when the economy goes down, people have two things happen to them. Number one, they have more time on their hands because of layoffs. So you got all, the unemployment rate goes up. You get a whole lot of people pushed out 
into the unemployment workforce, right? They were they're unemployed, a lot of people are at home and stuff like that. So what happens is consumption increases. So in a down economy, when there's less, when the, when the, when the economy's going bad, the hours people will watch on Netflix will increase. Because think about it, when you're in a bad mood or when you're going through a funk, what do you wanna do? You wanna veg out on your couch and just watch TV, right? You wanna binge seasons. So in a down economy, what happens is consumption goes up. People start consuming more because it's free or it's at least included in a small monthly subscription that they can afford. So if you think about this, all these companies that are doing all subscription models, they know they have to go to a cheap monthly subscription because once the economy tanks, they won't be able to get you to pay per view. They won't get you to pay per use, right? So that's what's happening. So think about it. How do you get recession proof? The way that you build a recession proof business is to know, will your business thrive if the economy starts tanking? Will your business thrive if people are sitting around at home with so just twiddling their thumbs, wishing they had a job and they got a bunch of time on their hands? So the business you need to be in, you need to be in the business where you're on a platform that they have access to for free and where you are giving them content that they can consume. When the economy goes down, podcast viewership will go up. YouTube viewership will go up, okay? All of your content that you're posting will go up. People will start engaging in your posts more. They will just have so much time, right? If you think people are complaining about politics right now, wait until the economy goes down. You know why, right now, if you think on social media, if you turn on and you get all this like clash of the politics type reality show going on, if you think it's a lot, it's nothing. It's nothing because the economy's good, so everybody's out working. Once everybody, once the economy's bad, you're gonna just see all these people with time on their hands, it's just gonna fuel. People are gonna justify spending eight hours in a single thread in a conversation. It's, look it, consumption is going to grow. The other thing that's gonna happen is the amount of money people spend on things is going to decrease. So therefore, the high ticket market, the mid ticket, the high ticket market will take a hit, but the low ticket market will actually do just fine because people are going to rationalize, I'm not making as much money as I used to make, so I gotta lower my spending. I gotta, we've gotta budget a little bit more. So they'll still, it's not that they'll actually just spend less, they'll still spend all their money, but if as long as the purchase price is lower, they'll justify that purchase a little bit easier. So for example, if you sell a course that's $2,000 or $5,000, it'll be harder to sell that if the economy tanks and you go into recession. But if you broke up that course, instead of selling it for $2,000, if you sold a course maybe for $100 to get started, and then once they're in the course, they could have a $200, $500 upgrade and stuff like that. If you broke it down, positioned it for a lower cost market, more people will justify the $100 price point, even if it's only a fraction of the content, than the $1,000 or $2,000 price point. This is what happens in a recession. So going back to this, and then I'm gonna bring Peter in, because Peter popped back in here with me. Going back to this, the idea of affiliate marketing is you find offers, you sign up for them, preferably in a corporation name, and if you guys need help with that kind of stuff, I could do a whole other video on, on corporation stuff. You sign up, and then you go out and you promote the offers everywhere that you can, okay? YouTube, blogging, Facebook, email, in this example, if you create a YouTube video, what happens is, is every single day for months, for years, people are watching the YouTube video and in the video you're essentially just promoting a product. So you give them a link to be able to click. In the video, you can have an in-video link. In the description, you can have a link. And on the screen of the video, you can have a website. There's lots of ways to be able to promote. And then what happens is a certain amount of people come in and buy and you make commissions. Now, here's the downside. These commissions, do, do not come in one day. So if you look at the months where it's like spread out, okay, so you got like month one, month two, month three, month four, month five, month six, month seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Okay, so if you look at a year, what happens is you're actually making a little bit more, like if you kind of look at the ramp here, in the beginning you're maybe making like $10 the first month, and maybe the second month you're making like 30, Okay, because your video has to get momentum. And then maybe the next month you're making like 50. And then the next month maybe you're making like 100. And then the next month is like 200. And then the next month, you know, still hasn't hit its momentum yet. Maybe it's 200 again. So what happens is six months has gone by, you've only made 200, 400, 500, not even $600. So where does the $5,000 come from? It comes from having momentum. Well, here's what I mean. If all you did was created a YouTube channel and uploaded one video, then you probably wouldn't do too well because you'll basically have like no subscribers, 
no momentum, no views, no anything. But if every single day for those six months, if every single day you uploaded a quick product review, let's say there's 30 days in a month, so 30 times six is 180. So that would be, if this was the case right here, let's say you did 180 videos, video reviews, in six months, okay? Well, what happens is all your videos will be on some sort of a, of a trajectory like this. They'll make a little bit of money at first, and sometimes they'll, they'll tape off, and some of them will just keep getting views and views and views and views. So what happens is by month six, now you have 180 videos. Every single one of these videos is adding to your subscriber count. Every single one of these videos is adding to your watch time. Every single one of these videos is making your channel popular. So in the beginning, your channel is not very popular at all. After six months, now let's say you have thousands of subscribers, you've, got, you've just crossed hundreds of thousands of views, you're killing it. Now, this, this video picks up. Instead of making 200, now it's making 500. Okay, look at that, 500. 500 a month, passively. And then maybe it even gets down to like 1,000. Okay, so it keeps going. So this right here, 200, 400, 500, this wasn't even $600. But then over here, all of a sudden, three thousand dollars. There's thirty-six hundred dollars, right? And the next thing you know, you got like let's say fifteen hundred on that month. Now, is it possible that a single video can generate fifteen hundred dollars a month? Yes. There are so many videos on YouTube that are making this kind of money right now, and YouTube is just one. YouTube's literally just one. If you can learn how to rank blog posts, when people go and type in the product, boom, you're going to be the affiliate getting it. If you can learn how to be able to get build loyalty and friendship on Facebook, then when you recommend a product, this is where friends trust friends, is on Facebook. So when you recommend something, you'll get a whole bunch of people say, sure, I'll try it out, or email. If you can get a whole bunch of people on your email list, this is where I've made most of my money. You build a 100,000 person list, you can send out, um, on this same little offer or whatever, I could send out two emails a day for three days, and I could probably make 30, 40, $50,000. So, all of these ways, this is like the kingdom. You're on a journey. You feel like a beginner. So here's you. You're on a journey going to a kingdom. Molly, let's go back over here for a minute. I'm gonna come we're gonna bring on Peter instead. So imagine like this. You're on a journey going to a kingdom. You see this castle in the background. You see that that's like the lifestyle you want, you deserve. You've been, you've been grinding it out, living in like little tents or whatever. And you don't mind, you're humble, but at the same time, you'd like, you, you believe you deserve more. So you get ready to embark on this journey. First thing you see in front of you is a swamp. Not just a swamp, but it's like, it's like there's animals in it. There's potential danger. You can't see it, but you know that some people have failed. So the first thing you see is a swamp. And what happens is you get paralyzed. You say, I don't know how to get through this swamp. I don't know what to do. I don't know where to go about doing it. I don't know who I should go with that's got the experience. I don't know how. You start asking the who, what, when, where, how, right? I don't know. I don't know. And so what happens is, instead of taking action, you get paralyzed. You get paralyzed, you get stuck, and you forget your dream. You quit on your dream. You forgot the reason you were even on the journey in the first place. And the, the other problem is, that swamp was just there as, as, as a basic obstacle to push away the masses from even trying. Whatever obstacles you're facing right now, you need to realize it's just really basic. Because two years from now, you could be reciting this stuff from the back of your hand so easily, okay? So I need you to understand, you're on a journey. You're going down this path and there's going to be some obstacles. If you are afraid of obstacles, you will not succeed. As an entrepreneur, you will not succeed. Because why do people work jobs? Because when you work a job, you work for a boss or for a company, that company is the one fronting all the money for all of the risk. That company is the one taking the risk on whether the business succeeds. That company is the one that is having to work all the long hours and figure out the business plan and figure out everything. You as the employee, you're able to just walk in, work a set amount of hours, clock in, clock out, do some tasks that somebody else comes up for you. Just do your, here's the tasks you do, here's a little system you follow, and then you get a paycheck. So you are taking a path as an employee of less risk. You're saying, somebody else take the risk, I just wanna show up, do my job, get my check, and go home. As an entrepreneur, you've gotta not only show up, do your job, but sometimes you don't get a check. Sometimes the employees get paid, you don't. Sometimes you've got to work long hours. Sometimes you've got to come up with what everybody needs to do in the first place. 
Sometimes you need to go learn from other people and take extra time to go to events and mentorship and seminars. It's so much more as an entrepreneur. That's why most people don't do it. So my question for you is this. Are you willing to do what most people won't so you can have results in your life that most people don't? Are you willing to do that? Are you willing to go down that journey knowing there will be obstacles? And when you come to that obstacle, let's say you don't make it through the swamp. Are you willing to get right back there at the edge of the swamp and go, you know what? That way that I tried last time didn't work. But clearly, many people have got past this obstacle. So I am going to keep trying until I conquer this obstacle. That's the way that I look at everything in the market. You guys might think, well, Chris is just going off on a rant. Not really. This is actually how I succeeded in making money internet marketing. I faced just as many obstacles as you faced, possibly more, because I didn't have the same tools, I didn't have the same mentors, I didn't have the same strategies, I didn't have the same resources. But the difference was, I probably failed more times than you did, for, than most of you. You know, a lot of people are like, oh my God, I tried, I, I tried this and I lost a thousand dollars and it didn't work. I mean, I can tell you stories where I tried something and I spent two hundred and fifty thousand dollars and lost it all within months. I can tell you something where I took all my money and I invested into a company over a million dollars, and then because I didn't know enough about corporations, the the company I signed a contract that I thought was good, and I ended up having the company stolen from me. Do you think that was good? No. Do you think that's a Think that's adversity, losing a million dollars, losing a company because I didn't sign some legal contract properly, right? There's learning curves, and I had to go through so many learning curves. I had to go through five years of, of grinding it out before I finally started having any, any success whatsoever. And even when I had success, I could show you my roller coaster took several dips. So my question for you is this: Are you willing to go down that journey, knowing other people have done it and made it? knowing that you will make it too as long as you don't quit. Because once you come to an obstacle, as long as every time you don't conquer it, you don't get mad, you don't insult other people, you don't, you don't get crazy about situations, you don't rant about it, you just simply say, okay, I tried it and that way didn't work. Let me try another way. And I'll give you one more tip before bringing Peter out here. And that is that success leaves clues. If there's any chance that you can find somebody who's been down that path, and has already overcome those obstacles, well, that person might be able to mentor you. It might be able to show you the path that they took in order to get there, okay? <clears throat> so I love the idea of mentorship. I love the idea of getting courses, getting masterminds, getting mentors, getting people who are further down that path or maybe have made it all the way to the kingdom. And then saying, listen, a shortcut is I can pay you and you can show me how to overcome this obstacle. Do you see what I'm saying? A shortcut is I can take time and I can research how to overcome the obstacle. That's how you gotta view it. Now, with that mindset, you'll realize that you're invincible. You can learn any topic or technique you want in the world. You can learn Facebook advertising, you can learn blogging, you can learn YouTube marketing, you can learn email marketing, you can learn list building, you can learn membership sites, you can learn creating courses, you can learn everything to be a six-figure affiliate marketer. And the last thing I'll say is this, and Peter, get ready to come out with us. The last thing I'll say is this. This work that I've done to become an internet marketer, oftentimes I talk about it being hard work. It was. I paid the price. But let me ask you this. Go talk to a doctor and ask them, were they paying the price when they were going to school and working a job on the side? Were they paying the price when they were sacrificing all their social life so that they could study and study and study to pass exams to be able to get that license? Were they paying the price when they went and worked an internship for another company for two or three years before they ever even did something? Were they paying the price when they wanted to be a doctor, they wanted to be a surgeon, but they had to work their way up all the way, and maybe it took them 10 years before they even got there? Look, everybody's got to pay the price. Does LeBron James pay the price to be one of the best elite athletes in the world? Do you think he makes sacrifices? Do you think he gets up and sweats every single day? If you want to be great at something, you have to be willing to pay the price. And I challenge you to, to, to view this. Which is really the greater price? The price that I paid helped me make six-figure income and then six figures a month and then my best month's over a million dollars in a single month, right? Did I really work any harder than I would have in any other profession that made only a fraction of the same amount of money? That's the thing. Those people work hard too. 
So as long as you're willing to work hard, if you align yourself in the affiliate marketing industry, you align yourself with people, mentors, coaches, and people that know what to do, what, how to get down that journey, and you're good at following uh, instructions, you're good at following, you're, good, you're motivated, you're good at being a team player, you will succeed. 